ask you, who is Christ? What do he look like? Well, they used to say he's our savior. All right. The savior of what? You, what is sin? All right. First, let me let me establish some. This is the image of the beast. This white image of Jesus Christ. That's the image of the beast. Right. All right. So if that's not Christ, who is Christ? That's the question. Give me Revelations one. I'm gonna show you. Read Revelations one. I got you. So brothers and sisters, listen up. We're gonna teach you your history in the Bible. We're gonna show you the proper understanding so you can return to the Father. Read that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So when we read Revelation, it says we're going to read the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word revelation means reveal. Right. So the Bible reveals what Christ looked like, right. who he was, what his race was. So jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candles, one like unto the Son of Men. So we're reading the vision that John saw. He said... There was one in the midst of the seven candlesticks like the Son of Man. Look at this image here. What do you have? You have your seven candlesticks and one like the Son of Man. Get out. The son of, you know who the Son of Man is? Jesus the Christ. That's, That's right. one of his titles. He's the Son of Man. So what we're reading, we're going to describe it on that poster. One like the Son of Man in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Read on. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, uh -huh. and the grit about the paths, uh -huh. with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. And when John saw Christ, he said his head and his hairs were white like wool. Jesus the Christ has white hair and is wooly, right. like an afro. Right. So Jesus the Christ has white, wooly hair. My brother right here, which one has white, wooly hair on them posters? Okay, so, so we see, now we're starting to see which one goes according to the Bible, right? Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head and his hairs were white and they were like wool. You know what wool is, right? Yeah. What's wool? Because of the sheep. Yes, hair texture like a sheep is a texture. The texture of these brothers' hair out here, that's wool. Jesus Christ had wooly hair. You understand that? So, so... European Jesus, white Jesus, does he have curly hair, woolly hair? No, no, he don't, he has straight hair, straight hair. So we're reading what Christ really looked like in the Bible. Read on. As white as snow, in his eyes there was a flame of fire, in his feet like unto fine bread. So they said he looked at his feet because he had a garment down to the foot. He looked at Christ's feet and he says it was like brass, what? As, excuse me, in his feet like unto fine bread as if they burned in a furnace. And my brother, my brother with the Harley, Harley jacket. My brother, did you hear what we just read what Christ looked like? You didn't hear? We're going to read it again from 14. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So my brother, what's that mean right there? It said his head and his hairs were white like wool. How, is this, how, how, do, how do we uh, know that? How do we know that? I want you to explain it though. I ask, I asked, how do we know that? You ain't got a minute, bro? I'll be right back. I'll come back. So Christ had white, wooly hair. The wooly hair is the texture of the uh, Negro hair, right. Afro hair. That's what the, the hair texture Christ had. Read on. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Why? Because when you read Genesis 49, it tell you his eyes will be red with wine. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. Now, when he looked at Christ's feet, he said they were like a, a fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So, oh, sir, if you get brass and burn it in fire, what color that come out? Like gold. Like your hair? No, it's talking about his feet. The oh. color of his feet was like brass. You know what brass is, right? Uh, I don't remember you know what color brass is? It's brown. It's brown. And it said his feet were like brass that burned in a furnace. If you get brass and burn it in a furnace, what color come out? Very, very dark. Black. Right, right. Bring it black. So Christ's color, his skin color, his feet, because he saw his feet, he said it was black like it burned in a furnace. That's right. So according to the Bible, which one would describe Christ? The white one or the black one? The posters we got there. 
Which one does the Bible describe Christ look like? <clears throat> no, no. We just read Christ had an afro. He had woolly hair and it was white. That's a picture we had. It was a this, this is the image of the beast. Right. This is not in the Bible. This is not in the Bible to describe what Christ looked like. This is the false image that was taught to us. Like, well, let me ask you, what's your nationality? Panama. Panama. All right, so in uh, Central America, the Spaniards came and they taught us white Jesus. They gave us a cross and was forward, forced to accept Christianity, Catholicism, so on and so forth. And this image came with that. So what they do, they changed what the, real, what the Bible said and gave us this image. Right. You know why they did that? You don't know? Because this looked like them. Right. They gave us the image that looked like them. And they changed the real image, which is a black man. Yes, yes, so you see, they're painting this image white. They took the old images, they painted them white. So what they did is they taught you Jesus Christ is white. Then they taught you a false religion under the image of that beast. Right. But really, you are an Israelite. That's right. You say you're from Panama, right? Right. According to, according to the Bible, you are from the tribe of Zebulun. That's right. Right, yeah, Hebrew. Israelite, yeah. Hebrew is a language. Oh, Israel. Israelite is a, a nationality. Right. That's who you are from the tribe of Zebulon. You're not Latino. You're not Hispanic. And this is this this is the king or the Israel uh, the, the king of the Jews, the Israelites. Right. Right. This is what Christ really looked like. Right. right. You asked a question or you said, well, what is the sins that he's supposed to save us from, right? Didn't you say that? You read first John three and four. Because guess what? Believe it, you, you're right. He is the savior. He is going to deliver the Israelites. You understand? But you got to understand what your sins are. That was a good question. You got to understand who this is. Now you know he's a black man. Now we're going to show you what the sins we're supposed to repent so he can save us for. Right? Read that. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. You hear that, brother? My brother, did you hear that? It says, whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. Read it again. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. The brother asks, what is sin? Our people don't know what sin is. The Bible tells us sin is when you break God's law. Right. You understand that? But guess what? We're taught in the church that God's laws is done away with. That we don't have to keep God's laws. But the Bible is telling us if we break those laws... It's called sin. Right. You're breaking the laws. Who knows what today is? Who knows what today is on Saturday? Give me the Exodus 20 and 8. Today, there's a law you're supposed to be keeping. And if you believe in Christ, you believe in God, you're going to keep the laws. Right. Otherwise, you in sin. Right. Read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. You hear that? The commandment, the law is to remember the Sabbath day. Read on. To keep it holy. And we're supposed to keep it holy. It's supposed to be a separate day from the rest. That's what holy means. It means separate. God says to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Read on. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the, is the Sabbath of the Lord he thy God. He said, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. The seventh day of the week is the Sabbath. So what's the seventh day of the week? My sister... The seventh day of the week is Saturday. It ain't Sunday. Right. The church taught you that Sunday is a Sabbath day. But the Bible said the sixth day of the week is the Sabbath day. Sunday is the first day of the week. That's how you know the Sabbath day is on Saturday. That's today. Today is the Sabbath day, and you're supposed to keep it holy. Come on down, brother. Pull over. Come deal with your brothers. Let's build. Read that again. 
verse 9. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Hey, my brother that just came out the store, come on, come on over again. I got something for you. Read. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. Well, we got six days out of the week to do all our work, all our business, all our stuff, right? Read on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. But thy the God. seventh day of the week is the Lord's Sabbath. You know today's a Sabbath day? Saturday. Saturday. So you know today's a Sabbath day. The washing, M I A, what's that? Do you know today's a Sabbath day? Yes. All right. So today is a Sabbath day. God says we're supposed to keep it holy and remember the Sabbath day. You know that, right? That's the fourth of the Ten Commandments, ain't it? Read on. Uh, Read on. In it thou shalt not do any work. So you ain't working today, are you? No, because you ain't supposed to work on the Sabbath day. Right. Nobody's supposed to be working today. Right. These shops should not be open. You should not be setting up a stand selling food. You should not be mowing your lawn. God says you have six days to do that. But on the Sabbath day, you ain't supposed to be working. Right. Give me Nehemiah 10, 31. Bring it out. Bring it Let out. me give you something else because... Today is the Lord's Sabbath. It's the Lord's holy day. And you're supposed to be keeping it. You understand that? If you fear God and love God, you're going to keep his laws. You're going to keep his commandments, right? Read that. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear any victuals on the Sabbath day. If the people of the land bring any wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. If they bring stuff to sell on the Sabbath day. You look around, you got all the shops open. You got people probably setting up their stands to sell food and clothes and whatever. God says if they do that on the Sabbath day, Saturday, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. He said we would not buy it of them. You hear that? What's your name? My name is Albert. Albert. It says we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath day, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're not supposed to be buying and selling on the Lord's Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You wasn't supposed to go into that market and buy that. But I keep it myself. I no, know. no. You heard what the law said? God says, don't buy it on the Sabbath day. Right. If these people bring stuff to sell, don't buy it. Right. That's obedience to the laws. You walked away when we was reading it, but sin is breaking these laws. Right. You just sinned against God buying that in there. Wow. You ain't supposed to do that no more. You understand that? I went to Abe, right? They go, you playing on top of this? I was like, oh, yeah, they go, we don't need <laughs> But listen, listen. We're talking about not buying on the Sabbath day right now. Oh. Did you buy some alcohol in there? A little, just that. Come on, bro. You got listen, listen. This is what you got to understand. All people need to come back to the Lord. Right. The reason why you you got your life in shambles, why your stuff is out of order, is because you're drinking. Right. You're breaking the Sabbath day. Right. You don't have God in, in your in your knowledge. You don't retain God in your knowledge. You're not acknowledging what God wants you to do, and that's why we have problems in our life. You understand that? So you understand. No buying on the Sabbath day, right? Wait, stay with me. Stay with me, uh, Albert. You understand we ain't supposed to be buying today, right? Hold on a second. What's your, what's your name? Albert, right? I got a question for you. Do you love Jesus? No, no, no. Do you, okay, do you love God? Do you love Jesus? That's his son. Okay, give me John 14, 15 real quick. So I just want you to listen to this, Albert, right? Listen, I'm gonna, I want you to listen to what the Bible say. All right, check this out. Book of John, chapter, chapter 14, verse 15. Bring it out. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, God said, if you love me, to keep my commandments. Now, I'm going to explain something to you. Albert, listen, I know you very well. You might think, how do I know? How do you know me? I just met you today. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Watch this. Watch this. No, no, no. But this is my first time meeting you. But I'm saying I know you. Why? Because I know a lot of people like you. I used to be like you, too. Now watch this. Check this out. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 48. Bring it out. The stranger yes. that, got it. that is within thee, get up, get, up, get up above thee very high. Now the stranger, which is the other nations, everybody, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, everybody outside of this right here, if you're not an Israelite, is a stranger, according to the Bible, right? Okay, so the stranger shall get above us very high. Now what's going to happen to us? And thou shalt come down very low. And then we'll be brought to a low estate. Okay? Now give me Isaiah 5 and 11. We'll be brought down to a low estate. What happens when you're in a low estate, Albert? Hello? When you're in a low estate. That brings on depression. Bring it out. That brings on you're not happy with your life. You're looking for an escape. Because what you see around is not good. Right. That's why when you look around here, Albert, if you look around, you see trash. You see the community's not cleaned up. 
We're in a bad part of the city, so-called bad part of the city. Albert, pay attention. Listen to me, bro. So when you see stuff like that, it brings you to a lower state because you don't see nothing good. Right. All you see is bad food, liquor stores, bad housing, right. no jobs, Jeez. no opportunity. So we're in a low estate. Yeah. Now, when you're in a low estate, what do you want to do? Give me Isaiah 5 and 11. Book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 11. Whoa. Woe unto them. Now, the Lord says, whoa, that means destruction because you're going to destroy yourself. Now, let's see how we destroy ourselves. Now, Albert, listen to me. I used to do the same thing that this scripture is getting ready to read. It's getting ready to say until I learned. Watch this, Albert. That rises up early in the morning. The Lord says, woe to the person that gets up early in the morning. And what does he do? That they may follow strong drink. So they go get some strong drink first thing in the morning. Now listen, Albert, there is absolutely no sin in strong drink. You can, you're allowed to drink, but you can't get drunk. Right. But the problem is when we wake up first thing in the morning to drink, it ruins the rest of our day. Right. Because now we're looking for what? More and more alcohol. Right. right. Then we go to sleep waking up. I can't wait till I wake up to get more alcohol. That's brought on because we broke God's commandments right. and we are in a low estate. Right. But Albert, there's good news. No, listen, Albert. I'm going to finish this verse. There's good news. Watch this. That continue until night, till wine inflames them. So you keep drinking that alcohol till wine inflames you. And then now you're looking for a party or now you're looking for other people to get drunk with or get high with right. because of the low estate that we are in, Albert. But listen, I'm going to tell you what God said about you. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Bring it out. I'm going to tell you what God said about Albert. And if you are a black man, a black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, Native American man, Native American woman, this is what God says about you. This is good news. Listen to this. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art in holy people. The Lord said if you're a black man, or Hispanic man, or Hispanic woman or black woman. You are a holy people. When you are holy, there's certain rules that come with that. Right. Come on. Unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. The Lord said he has chosen you to be a special people. It doesn't matter if you're living in a tent over there or if you're living in housing. That's in a bad neighborhood. It doesn't matter how you live. The Lord said you are special. That's right. The Lord says you are holy. The Lord says you're his. Read. Above all people. Equal to above all people. That's good news, Albert. That's good news, black man. That's good news, black woman. You're above all people. I don't care what condition you're in. Right. You're holy and you're supposed to be separated. You belong to God. We got to return back to God. That's right. Drop down to verse 1. Watch this. This is your history book right here. Right. What is it, still February? It's supposed to be Black History Month? Right. This is the Black History book of yeah. all time right here. Right. The right. Bible is true black history. Right. The Bible was written for us and by us. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently. Listen, Albert, black man, black woman. The Lord said, this will happen if you will listen to me diligently. Come on. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments. The Lord said, if you will do all his commandments, if we have a problem keeping his commandments. That's the reason why we're in the condition that we're in today. Bad housing, bad food, bad water, and we have to go to another nation for help. Because we won't listen to God's word. Read. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Albert, listen, I'm trying to help you, brother. The Lord want to set you on high. Do you want to be on high? Do you want to be high without getting high? Right. <laughs> listen to this, Albert. Read. Above all nations. The Lord said he wants you, black man, Hispanic man, to be above all nations. That's not the Bible. What are we reading? The King James Version Bible. Come on. Of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If you keep his commandments, you're going to get all these blessings. Bring it out. Let's read some of these blessings. Come on. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the city. 
Look around. Do we look blessed now? Bring it out. No, we live in the worst part of the city. I don't care what state you go to. I don't care what country you go to. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. You're supposed to be above all people. Bring Come over here and talk to your brother. Build Please. with us. I'm trying to build this community up. Right. We're supposed to be above all nations. Come on. And bless shall I be in the field. And bless shall you be in the field. What that means is your jobs. The work that you have be blessed. You won't have to settle for minimum wage jobs. But the problem is we won't listen to God. Right. You done tried everything else. You have yet to try God. Bring it out. Come on. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Your children will be blessed. Bring it out. Is our children blessed now? No, they forcing you to get a shot, flu shot, putting poison in your body. Right. Forcing you to do it against your will. You're not blessed right now. But God said he wanted you to be blessed. Listen to God. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind. The Lord said everything in your possession will be blessed. If you listen to him, drop down to verse 15. But the problem with the black man, the black woman, the Hispanic man, the Hispanic woman, is we refuse to listen to God. Right. Oh. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. It but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the Lord says, now if you won't listen, I gave you the blessings. If you listen to me, I'm going to bless everything. But if you won't listen, this is going to happen to you. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses, if you refuse to keep God's commandments. So you have a chance to get up out of these curses if you keep his commandments. Let's read one of his curses. Drop down to verse 35. Watch this. Verse 35, the Lord shall smite thee in the knee. The Lord said he's going to give you bad knees right. if you break his commandments. How many of us got bad knees? How many of our people you see limping around here? Bring it out. Because you've been shot, sis? Watch this. Read on. And in the leg with a sore butt that cannot be healed. The Lord said he'll smite us in our legs that can't be healed. Once you have surgery, you're never the same again. Or you have to live with the rest of your life. The Lord bring these type of curses on us because we refuse to keep his commandments. Get out. Read. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head, the Lord shall bring thee and, the, and thy king which thou set, thou set over thee unto a nation. Now listen, the Lord said from the sole of your foot to the top of your head, you'll be cursed physically. Now give me verse 28. Watch this. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Madness means he'll make you crazy. You think it's okay to have children without getting married. Right. Bring it out. You bounce from man to man to man or woman to woman to woman and think that's okay. Bring it out. And then you wonder why we leave the nation and our children going to prison. Bring it out. We have no order, no structure, no discipline. That's crazy thinking. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.